The New York Jets are looking to have their best season in over a decade in 2023, and so far in training camp, it looks to be heading in that direction. Now, the Jets have been one of the worst teams in the NFL since making back-to-back -back AFC Championship games in 2009 and 2010. They've cycled through four head coaches and 12 starting quarterbacks in that time frame and really haven't been a competitive team. The biggest reason for their lack of success, in my opinion, has been their quarterback situation. The Jets organization has had a really hard time identifying the quarterback position and selecting the right ones in drafts. I mean, just in five years, the Jets have selected two quarterbacks inside the top three, Sam Darnold in 2018 and Zach Wilson in 2021, and both turned out to be a huge disaster. I'd like to give Darnold a little credit just because of how bad of a situation he came into, especially with Adam Gaze having to be the one to bring out all of his potential. I mean, Darnold showed some life early in his career, but just never could stay consistent enough to be the franchise guy. But then to replace him, the Jets basically went after another very similar player. A guy with not a ton of college experience, a relatively raw player with amazing tools, and Zach Wilson. And that experiment from the start just did not look good. He wasn't good as a rookie, he didn't show many signs of consistent potential, and he came back in year number two and was somehow worse. He was so bad the Jets benched him for career journeyman Mike White, washed up Joe Flacco, and a CFL quarterback in Chris Strebler on national television. But despite their trash quarterback situation last year, the Jets still managed to find themselves at 7-4 after 12 weeks weeks and one of the most surprising teams in the NFL. It was actually really impressive how they got themselves in this position heading into December with how putrid their quarterback play and offense was. Their offense ranked 29th in the league with only 17.4 points per game and 25th in the league with 318.2 yards per game. Well, how did they manage to get off to such a hot start? Well, it was their defense which allowed the fourth fewest points in the league and their two young offensive studs making key timely plays in Garrett Wilson and running back Brees Hall before he unfortunately tore his ACL in week number seven. Going into the season, I expect the Jets defense to definitely be better than what it was in 2021 with Carl Lawson returning from injury, Quinnen Williams taking another step, and three new starters in the secondary with Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, and Jordan Whitehead. But what I did not expect was this defense to jump into an elite category so quickly. And just about everyone echoed that same belief. Vegas put their win total at five and a half prior to last season, and I think most NFL fans still viewed them as a rebuilding team with a lot of flaws. So early in the year, the Jets were rightfully one of the top stories in the league. But with how the NFL goes, the early season magic that the Jets had faded in December as a unit can only carry a team for so long. They would end up losing their last six games and finish the season with a record of 7-10. and 10. But because of how that defense played last year and how well they performed all season long, it gave the Jets organization some clarity on what they needed to do to turn this team into a true Super Bowl contender. Their defense didn't need any wholesale changes as it already proved it was championship caliber last year. It was the offense that needed a complete makeover if this team was going to take that next step and man did the Jets organization go all in this offseason to achieve that goal. They parted ways with their offensive coordinator in Mike LaFleur and brought in Nathaniel Hackett to replace him. They signed Alan Lazard to a four-year contract. They signed Nicole Hardman to a one-year contract. They also brought in Randall Cobb to help finalize the wide receiver core and their biggest move of all was trading for Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers. So instantly after the Jets made that trade for one of the best quarterbacks in the league, they quickly became one of the most hyped up teams in the NFL. If you take into account what their defense did a season ago and how much better their offense should be this year, it's pretty easy to see why so many people expect them to be good in 2023. People forget Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs just two years ago, yet he's still gotten a lot of flack for his performances last year with the Packers. Personally, I don't put all the blame on Aaron. The Packers traded away his best wide receiver in Devontae Adams. He had a bunch of young guys who hadn't really done anything in the league to throw to, and you combine that with a thumb injury he suffered early in the season, and you can begin to understand why why he didn't have a great season last year. But the Jets started training camp a bit earlier than normal this year due to the Hall of Fame preseason game that they're gonna play in. And just in about a week of practice, there's already been numerous viral moments regarding Aaron Rodgers and wide receiver Garrett Wilson. They've been absolutely tearing up Jets practice and one of the top rated defenses day in and day out. All of the reporters for the Jets have continuously come out almost every day saying how well their chemistry has been and how dominant they've been. We saw a deep pass of Rodgers just hitting Wilson on the money down the left side sideline. He beat his man 
Rodgers teardropped it over his shoulder, and Wilson toe-tapped to finish off the catch. That wasn't the only one, though. We also saw another long pass. This time, it was a touchdown down the right sideline. Wilson got a ton of separation on the play, and Rodgers just made it look easy. He dropped it in perfectly. The most viral one, though, was a ridiculous toe-tap once again by Wilson in the back of the end zone. This was an insane catch. Rodgers bought some time on the play, got outside the pocket. Then he lofted one up to Wilson in the back of the end zone. He jumped up super high in the air, showed off fantastic body control, and came down and still got two feet in on the play and honestly just made it look kind of easy. So only after practicing with each other for a couple of weeks now, this duo is already putting the league on notice, and Devontae Adams, who knows more than anyone how lethal a top wide receiver can be with Rodgers throwing them the ball, he posted an Instagram story of Wilson's catch saying, these two better act up this year, which I thought was super interesting. I think he already sees the vision on how good they're actually going to be together this season. But I don't want to get it twisted, this is not the first time we have seen Garrett Wilson's elite talent and skill set. I was very intrigued with Garrett Wilson last year, I thought he was already a top top 20 wide receiver as a rookie. He quickly became one of the most dynamic players with the ball in his hands in football. He's shifty, he's got good speed, runs crisp routes, and has great hands. And as a 22-year-old, he put up 1,100 yards and four touchdowns with Zach Wilson and Mike White throwing him the football. Now he gets Aaron Rodgers to throw him the ball in another year to develop in year number two. I really do think Wilson is going to emerge as a top 10 wide receiver after this season. Now, I don't want to compare him to Devontae Adams quite yet just because of how much Adams has established himself in the league, but they do have very similar play styles. I can see the vision of people that are comparing Wilson to Adams and saying he can kind of develop into that type of player. But I would like to remind everyone that the last time Rodgers played with Adams, he won 13 games in three straight seasons. He threw the most touchdowns of his career with 48. So if Wilson can take that leap, which everyone is expecting him to do now, this could be in all honesty, one of the scariest duos in the entire league. With how stacked the AFC is with quarterbacks and wide receivers, I do expect Wilson and Rodgers to be the determining factor for how far the Jets can go this year. The Jets defense will be really good again they're bringing everybody back and it's a relatively young unit so it comes down to how much better will this Jets offense be and as I mentioned throughout the video this should be a drastically different offense a brand new elite quarterback now under center numerous new wide receivers Brees Hall returning from injury and a few offensive linemen also coming back from injury in Mikai Becton Elijah Vera Tucker and longtime vet Dwayne Brown so when I look at the gauntlet of a schedule to start the season I think we will learn a lot about this team before their bye week and it'll be important for all of these new players on offense to gel quick or the Jets could find themselves in some trouble. They host Buffalo on Monday Night Football to open the season. Then they travel to Dallas to face the Cowboys. They're back at home for a divisional game against the Patriots. Then they host the Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, on Sunday Night Football. Then they travel to Colorado to face the revamped Broncos with Sean Payton. And then they host the NFC champs, the Philadelphia Eagles, before their bye week. So if the Jets can start off 3-3 three three or 4-2 in the hard stretch of their schedule, I think that will prove well for their success in the rest of the season. The last thing I really want to address in this video is a popular narrative that was thrown out about Rodgers when he first got traded to the Jets. A lot of people in the media were assuming that this was going to be like a one-year rental. He's only going to play a year for the Jets and then retire. Well, that is officially debunked now as he signed a new contract today while I was recording this video. He had $110 million guaranteed left on his old deal for the next two years, but now he took a $35 million pay cut, which gives the Jets more flexibility to build around him. But I'm going to be super interested to see how Rodgers and the Jets perform this year. Is this going to turn out more like Brady? going to Tampa or Russell Wilson to the Broncos. It's going to be fascinating to watch. We really get our first glimpse of it all coming on Hard Knocks right here in August. But let me know what you think about Garrett Wilson and how many yards you think he's going to have in 2023. Also, let me know if you're buying the Jets hype and how many games you think they're going to win next season. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you guys in my next one.